we went to one engagement with Srila Prabhupada. He was, this was very, very uh, impressive. He was supposed to, to, to be on television. It was a television show, and we went there, and there was a mix-up. And somehow or other, uh, there was a, somehow or other was some confusion, and they were not prepared to have Srila Prabhupada on the television show. So there we were at the studio at the, the television station, and Prabhupada was standing there, and we had nothing to do. And just then, a young man, early twenties, came up and said, "Well, I have a radio show that I conduct here." And I would be very happy to interview the Swami on my radio show, if he would like to. And Prabhupada said yes. So we went up to his little studio. It was in the same building. It was just myself, Srila Prabhupada, and this, the interviewer. And he was very respectful. He really had a lot of respect for Prabhupada. And he was asking nice questions. Prabhupada was sitting on a stool, a kind of a high stool. That's all he had in there. And... Um, so at one point, the young man asked, so why, why did you come to America? And Prabhupada said, uh, to explain to people about what they have forgotten, love of God. And the young man said, does that mean that you're the Messiah? And Prabhupada said, yes. And the young man took everything that Prabhupada said very seriously. That's why he asked if he was a Messiah. He, he thought, well, if you've come to teach about love of God, then you must be the Messiah. And Prabhupada said, yes, I'm the Messiah. And, and he said, who sent you? And Prabhupada said, my Guru Maharaj asked me to come. <laughs> so that was very interesting because on one hand he was saying, yes, I'm the Messiah, the Savior of all the people, but not because God sent me, but because my spiritual master sent me to do this. So the young man was very impressed, very pleased with that. Before Prabhupada came, uh, New Vrindavan in 74, it was really, there was no support from anywhere. We were just eating weeds to live, literally. We were eating weeds, and uh, so there wasn't much money, but there was this, you know, some construction projects going on, and there were, so every little penny that came in, it was always Jisha. We, and we didn't eat rice. Pl white rice was a Sunday feast item, to, you know, to give you perspective. So the question is, okay, the, the Guru's coming. You want to do the right thing for the Guru. Well, which is more important, to use the money to push on the project, or sh since the only vehicles we had were all pretty junky, you know, like trucks and rec old wrecky things. There were, nobody had a nice vehicle. Well, should they rent a vehicle, uh, a nice vehicle for Prabhupada to, to ride in? So it was like this whole back and forth went on for a couple of weeks, and finally the well, rent a nice vehicle for Prabhupada party sort of won out. So when they when Prabhupada came out. Uh, uh, from the airport, and my, my thing at that time was kind of like, you know, going ahead, you know, checking hallways and stuff. And uh, so I got out to the car and opened the door, and he got in the car. And they went, went around. It was, you know, it was a, the better car that you could rent at an airport. It wasn't like the Lumina or whatever, the equivalent in that time. It was the, the better car. And uh, Prabhupada gets, and they go, and they go to start the car, and it won't start. It wouldn't start. I mean, this is, you know, a rental car at an airport. Have you, has this ever happened to anybody? I mean, and they'd driven the car, they'd picked the car up, they'd driven it over to the curb, so when he came out of the airport and got in it, it wouldn't start. It was completely dead, nothing. So uh, then it turned out somebody's devotee's brother was there, and he had a, you know, it was, you know, it wasn't a farm vehicle. So Prabhupada, got, they got him out. They, they messed with it for like 10, 15 minutes and nobody could get nothing. So they got him out and he got in this other car and drove that down to the farm. They drove him down to the farm there. So it was sort of like, 
I always thought it was sort of funny that Krishna just sort of intervened. So you, had, you got kind of like, you made the gesture for the guru, you know, performed the sacrifice for the guru, but you still got to keep the money. <laughs> uh, and that was pretty, you know, to me it was kind of, you know, there's a lot, always a logical explanation for anything. It was kind of a little bit of a, a little miracle, you know. He wasn't feeling very well, and he wasn't eating too much, and everybody was concerned. And um, so one day, Nanda Kishore decided to make Prabhupada a big feast. And the regular cooks at that time were Prajumna and Satsarup. They were taking care of the cooking together. So Nanda Kishore made a big feast. Satsarup and Prajumna made samosas. And I made something extra. I made some pineapple chutney. And um, so they served this, well, this huge meal to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada just ate the samosas and the pineapple chutney. And he said, this pineapple chutney has saved my life. So. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada's mercy. It was an interview. And It was a call, there were call-ins on this show, and they were all Christians, and they were all asking about, you know, what about Christianity, and what, what is your feeling about Christ? And uh, Prabhupada said, yes, there is no difference. Um, we are, it is not sectarian. We are teaching the same thing, how to love God. He said, but we are giving more information, God's name and address, his mother's name, where he lives, and... Uh, his mother's name and how you can go there. And uh, so he later on wrote me a letter about Portland. He said, I remember that when I was in Portland, there were many Christians and they were asking about what our feeling about Christ is. And so our philosophy is that we're not, we don't say that you have to be this religion or that religion, but we're simply interested in love of God. And so Christ in that regard is teaching the same thing. Um, after that particular um, interview, on the way back, Shamasundar was, I was driving, but Shamasundar was speaking with Srila Prabhupada and he was praising him. That Prabhupada, you answered so wonderfully. Your talks were, you, you just, it was perfect the way you answered those questions. And Prabhupada said, really? You liked it? And Shamasundar encouraged him more. He said, yes. He said, well, what did you like especially? And so he would say what he liked especially, and Prabhupada said, yes, that was a good point. And it was, it was kind of like a boxer, you know, just who had won the fight, and the trainer had said, oh, that was a great fight, and when you hit him with this one and that punch. And so Prabhupada was reliving the, uh, the discussion somewhat like a boxer, that he had defeated them in their different arguments. We, I went on two morning walks in Hawaii. He was there two separate times, so I don't know which was which. But one morning walk, um, Bali Mardan said, look at these clouds, Srila Prabhupada, they look like birds. And Prabhupada said, um, yes, there are birds like bigger than this. And they, they f perch on planets in outer space and they lay their eggs while flying through outer space. So... You know, I I don't know what that all meant. And then another time, he said, why have they taken all the coconuts off the trees? They said, well, Srila Prabhupada, they think that the coconuts are going to fall on someone's head and kill them. And Srila Prabhupada said, that is not possible. Coconuts have eyes. <laughs> uh, once in Delhi, we were taking a morning walk in the park. So there was a man standing on his head doing some yoga exercises. So some of the devotees began to laugh at him. And Prabhupada cut them short. He said, don't laugh. He said, this makes the body fit for spiritual life. 